good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce to, pro to you Professor Tanga Velu from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. Uh, we didn't manage to meet in person, but I'm glad to see him now on the screen. And he will talk about holomorphic extensions of eigenfunctions on NA groups. Please. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a talk in this conference. So, so I will, today I will talk, we talk about holomorphic extensions of um, eigenfunctions on NA groups. And this is based on joint work with Luz Ronkar. Now I, maybe I should change it to, is it visible now? Hello? It's black only. Oh. It, on my screen at least. Then I will go back. What about yeah, now? Is, now? Now we see. Or I see. Maybe yeah. you can do full screen if possible. Okay. So, uh, is it? No? No. Yes, no. now it's okay. No. I think it's okay, right? Yeah. It's big enough. So, we, we, yeah, let me, let me just continue. We consider a Riemannian symmetric space, x equal to g mod k of a non-compact type, where g is a semi-simple Lie group and k is a maximal compact subgroup. And then we take the Laplace Beltrami operator on x. Um, so we know that um, it has been proved that every eigenfunction of this operator has a holomorphic extension to set an g invariant open subset of um, open neighborhood of x inside the complexification of the symmetric space X. So here if I denote GC by the complexification of G and KC by the complexification of K, then XC can be identified with this GC mod KC. And this has a natural complex structure which contains X. So inside this uh, XC, there is a very simple G invariant open neighborhood of open neighborhood, which is denoted by this psi of x. So this was first proposed by Akhiser and Gindikan and then studied quite a lot in recent years by Bernard Kurtz and Stanton. It's known as the complex crown. So Kurtz and Schlick-Krulp has shown that every eigenfunction of this, every eigenfunction of this Laplace Beltrami operator has a natural holomorphic extension to this complex crown. But instead of considering this domain, we are interested in slightly different holomorphic extension of the eigenfunctions. So in order to do that, we take the case of a rank one symmetric space of non-compact type. Then writing down the Iwasawa decomposition of G as NAK, where N is an important Lie group and A is abelian and K is a maximal compact subgroup. We can identify the symmetric space with G mod K. Now this G mod K can be identified with a solvable group, usually denoted by S equal to NA. So in the as I mentioned, this in this above decomposition, N is a H type group, and A can be identified with R plus, and R plus has a natural action on this nilpotent part N, acting on dilations. So it is possible to form the semi-direct product S equal to NA, and that we can identify with the symmetric space X. So let, let's take the point of view that the symmetric space X is given by the solvable group NA, where N and A are coming from the Iwasawa decomposition. So in this setting, so we consider eigenfunctions as functions on n cross a. So suppose u n comma a, n is coming from n and a coming from a is an eigenfunction. And then we are going to fix x, uh, fix the point a, and then interested in the holomorphic extendability of uh, this function n going to u of n comma a for a fixed. So we expect that so for each A, there is a natural open set omega A inside the complexification of the important group N. We just call it NC. So that all the eigenfunctions of this Laplacian S will holomorphically extend. So Laplacian S is the Laplace Beltrami operator on the symmetric space X, which is now identified with NA. So in a recent work with Luz Roncal, we have shown that this is the case for certain eigenfunctions of the Laplace-Beltrami operator. So that is the, that, that, that's what we are going to talk about. 
maybe for simplicity i will just start with the real hyperbolic space so in this case the real hyperbolic space can, can be identified as g mod k with the g is this group identity component of this so n1 and then the maximal compact subgroup is the special orthogonal group so n so the wasawa decomposition gives the nilpotent part as the euclidean space rn and k is so n and then a can be identified with the half line r plus so h can be identified with the upper half space rn plus 1 plus rn cross r plus and the riemannian metric is just rho for minus 2 mod dx square plus d rho square but rho denotes the element of r plus so with this uh, let's take the laplace wolframi operator delta g on this associated to this metric um so it is convenient to consider the conformally invariant laplace wolframi operator not delta g the conformally invariant one is denoted defined by um adding or subtracting this n squared minus 1 by 4 to the laplace wolframi operator delta g this is conformally invariant in the sense that if i change the metric g by multiplying by a, a positive function then there is a nice um, change of uh, the operator so with this um let's take this um, g not equal to rho square g and then using the conformal invariant property of uh, lg we can compute this new operator lg uh, just um it's the not where is it yeah the lg is given here minus rho square the plus in ordinary laplace in rn plus d rho square plus n minus 1 rho d rho minus n square minus 1 by 4 so this is the new operator so uh, for this operator we are interested in this eigen function equation minus laplacian g w equal to gamma into n minus gamma into w gamma is i'm taking this particular value of gamma s plus n by 2 and then the because of the connection between laplacian g and lg we have this if w is an eigen function of this equation satisfying this equation then lg w is given by this so that satisfies lg w becomes an eigen function of lg with eigen value n squared minus s squared by 4 it is convenient to rewrite everything in terms of this operator that's mainly because of the reason so suppose w satisfies the above equation this equation so an eigen function of lg and then if i set u equal to rho power minus n minus s by 2 times w then one can easily verify that the u is that is u satisfies the following equation ordinary laplacian plus d rho square plus 1 minus s by rho d rho acting on u is zero so u is a solution of this equation so obviously so this equation has been studied in recent years in connections with the so called extension problem leading to fractional powers of the laplacian so the eigen functions of laplacian g on the hyperbolic space so now they are connected to the solutions of the extension problem for the ordinary laplacian on rn so we want to make use of this connection so the extension problem for the laplacian i'm just recalling it so it is given by this equation laplacian plus d rho squared plus 1 minus s by rho d rho acting on u is zero and we can put an initial condition let's say u of x at rho equal to zero is f let's say f is coming from l2 of rn and then so as i said this is connected to the the definition of fractional powers of the laplace the laplacian so i will not get into that but i will write down an explicit solution of this equation that is given by taking the convolution of the function f with the generalized poisson kernel so let let me take phi s rho of x is some suitable constant this normalizing constant so that the initial value will be satisfied initial condition will be satisfied so it's not worry about that so this is simply given by rho squared plus mod x squared power minus n plus s by 2 take this function the generalized poisson kernel because s equal to 1 gives the classical poisson kernel on the upper half space and then take the convolution of f with this kernel and then multiply by rho power s then we get the a solution of this equation so written in this form so the kernel has a holomorphic extension so f of s rho i can make z x into complex and then i can simply define this to be rho squared plus z1 squared plus z2 squared up to z n squared provided um 
well, this will be holomorphic provided modulus of the imaginary part of uh, is like this less than rho because of this rho squared plus something something the imaginary part has to be restricted so that this will be holomorphically extending to this domain so this is a tube domain so the kernel extends as a holomorphic function to the tube domain and if i start with f in l2 one can show that the convolution also has a holomorphic extension to the tube domain so the solution of the extension problem extends to omega rho is a holomorphic function And we can also go to the Fourier transform side and to see that this is the case. So if we take the Fourier transform of the generalized Poisson kernel, then we will end up with this McDonald function of type s by two. I'm just calling it k s by two. And then if I let i nu stand for the Bessel function of the second kind, then we can define a new weight function w rho of psi to be this one. So this is the McDonald function, and this is the i function normalized so that it's a constant at the origin. And then, so this allows us to <coughs> look at yes, some kind of a Sobolev space. We know the behavior of these two functions. So this behaves like one plus mod psi or rho plus mod psi power certain power, depending on n. Very precisely, we know the behavior. So we can denote this uh, HS rho R n to be the Sobolev space, defined by the condition that uh, f is a Tambay distribution whose Fourier transform is a function, which is square integral with respect to this positive weight function. So if I take this this definition, then let's see. So I start with an initial condition f coming from HS rho, and then convolve with this Poisson kernel. Then we have a holomorphic extension, and that f going to that holomorphic extension, I will just denote this operator taking f into this solution to be T s. So the T s takes f into this holomorphic extension of the solution. I want to know what is the what is going to be the image of this Sobolev space under this operator T s? T should be T rho. So in order to do that, then we introduce a weighted Bergman space. So you consider all holomorphic functions on this domain omega rho, uh, which is square integrable with respect to this weight function one minus mod y squared by rho squared over s minus one, and this is a Lebesgue measure on omega rho. So introducing this weighted Bergman space, then we can prove this operator T rho taking the Sobolev space into this um, weighted Bergman space, we can show that this is a unitary operator. And that gives me um, the following characterization for solutions of the extension problem. So a solution of the extension problem for the Laplacian is of the form f times f convolved with the kernel for some f in L2, if and only if for each rho fixed, then u extends to omega rho as a holomorphic function that belongs to this weighted Bergman space and also satisfies the uniform estimate. So just checking that f is coming from this L2 and then holomorphic extension and then showing that this, <coughs> the norms are bounded is easy. In order to prove the converse, we made use of that unitary property of the operator. So then we can um, <coughs> restate this result as an is a characterization of eigenfunction of the Laplace Beltrami operator on the hyperbolic space. So in order to do that, we can just, uh, let's define this Poisson kernel, P lambda x rho, so as rho power n minus, so I'm just slightly changing. For every complex number, I can define this, provided this um, n minus i gamma by two is not a pole of um, the gamma function. And then, so this, is, this, is, this will give me the Poisson kernel on the hyperbolic space. So hyperbolic space is, you can just, we have this upper half space identification, and then this is the classical version. Then the Poisson transform will look like this. So this is a non-compact picture of the hyperbolic space. So in that, the Poisson transform the, of a function on the upper half space will look like this. And uh, <clears throat> so we want to know, so if I define uh, the Poisson transform by this, equation where I have defined this Poisson kernel in terms of the generalized Poisson kernels, then P lambda f will be an eigenfunction of the Laplace, Laplace Beltrami operator with this eigenvalue. And then the previous theorem which I stated for the extension problem can be restated. So an eigenfunction of the Laplace Beltrami operator delta g with eigenvalue minus one fourth n squared minus s squared. So this is going to be the Poisson integral with purely imaginary lambda with f coming from this weighted L2 space, if and only if 
um, the eigen function for each row, row, row extends to omega rho as a holomorphic function, belongs to this weighted Bergman space, and satisfies the estimate, this sort of uniform estimate. Um, so this is the theorem which we can deduce from the corresponding theorem for the um, extension problem. So this is this is much this is very simple because the hyperbolic case the solution is given very explicitly and, and this is everything is sort of easy well understood. So now we go to the complex hyperbolic space. So in this case, uh, well, where is it? Yeah, complex hyperbolic space and G is going to be this group S u n plus one comma one and K will be the special unitary group. And then I can identify the complex hyperbolic space with G mod K. And then here, if I take the Iwasawa decomposition of this group, then I end up with uh, the Heisenberg group. So the N is going to be the Heisenberg group and K is going to be the special unitary group. And A is as usual R plus because it's again uh, rank one. So the Heisenberg group is basically CN cross R equipped with the group law that's given by this one. So I will not uh, spend much time on this. So we have Z step, step two important Lie group. Uh, it's going to be the typical example of a H type groups. So it is, since we are going to be interested in holomorphically extending functions on the Heisenberg group into the complexification of the Heisenberg group, it's better to identify the Heisenberg group with R2n plus one and use the real coordinates. So the coordinates now will be x in rn, u in rn, and psi will be coming from r, and the group law will look like this, and this is the symplectic form on r to n. So with this notation, I need to introduce the sub-Laplacian and the laplace Beltrami operator on the, the complex hyperbolic space. So I have this heisenberg Lie algebra, hn, um, for which I have this basis. These are the left invariant vector fields, xj, yj, j runs from 1 to n, and then this is d by dx i. So they form a basis for the Lie algebra. Hello? Something happening? Yeah, okay. Professor Tangabello, can you hear us? Hello? So, mm. <coughs> <coughs> right to him. Please, yeah. I think the connection. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, you're back. Professor Tangabello, oh. we lost you. And yeah, slide 11. Yeah. So we have this non-isotropic dilation. And Could you please uh, share your screen again? Because the last few, yeah, but the, go back to the slide. What you said not projecting. Oh. Is it short Yeah, this is, this is the slide we, we where we- yeah. this Yes, is here in this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah here, here. Uh, no, maybe so, even uh, for a little further up, sorry. Yeah, this is where we lo lost yeah, you. Yeah. Solvable extension, yeah, exactly. So, 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 so we have this sublaplacian, and then we have this non-isotropic dilations uh, indexed by R plus and their automorphisms. So that means R plus is acting on HN by auto these automorphisms. So we can form the uh, semi-direct product. So I just take the semi-direct product as S equal to HN cross R plus. The action is given by the dilations. And this is the group law. And then one can check that this is a solvable group. And then because we have written the complex hyperbolic space as NAK with N equal to Heisenberg group, and then A is R plus and K is SUN, we can identify the space with the, this solvable group. So with this identification, so we have these following vector fields. So this is rho D rho, we call it E naught, and EJ is just dilation of this XJ by square root of rho and e n plus j dilation of yj with square root of rho and then e 2n plus 1 is rho times this is d by dx i. So this, this becomes left invariant vector fields on the solvable group. So in terms of this, the um, 
Let me see. Yeah. So yes, the, the, the algebra of um, the solvable group can be identified with this R2n plus 2. We have these 2n plus 2 vector fields. And then we can just declare them to be an orthonormal basis. And that induces a Riemannian metric on this uh, solvable, this D algebra. And for that Riemannian manifold, then we can define the Laplace Beltrami operator. And then it turns out to be given by this operator. The, Riemann, the Laplace Beltrami operator is given by sum of squares of these vector fields minus n plus one times the first vector field in R. And that we can write in terms of the sub Laplacian and then d rho squared and then rho d rho. So this is the central variable in the assembly group. So if I look at this, um, so we'll see the connection between sub Laplacian, how it is coming now. So consider the following eigenvalue problem, just like the case of the real hyperbolic space. Um, so this, there's no minus here. Laplacian S applied to some, of, some function giving the eigenvalue gamma times n plus one minus gamma, where I take gamma equal to half of n plus one plus s for s positive. Then we can verify that um, if w tilde satisfies this equation, then if I define w and u in terms of w tilde by the following equations. So there, there's some, some dilation is involved here. So in the real hyperbolic space, we didn't see this dilation. But then there is a dilation and then multiplication by rho power something. So if I define u in terms of w tilde, then we can easily establish the following relation. So the function w tilde is an eigenfunction of the Laplace Beltrami operator with eigenvalue given by this. We find only if the function u related to w tilde by this satisfies this equation. Minus Laplacian plus this operator, d rho squared plus one minus 2s by rho d rho plus one fourth of rho squared d xi squared acting on u is zero. So u solves this equation. So this is the analog of the Laplacian plus d rho squared plus one minus s by rho d rho in the case of the hyperbolic, real hyperbolic space. Now we have some extra term added here. So, so if we want to study the eigenfunction problem for the hyperbolic space, then we are led to the this extension problem for the sub Laplacian, this new extension problem for the sub Laplacian. So therefore, so we consider the following extension problem. So if is the given initial condition on the Heisenberg group, and then I want, I'm looking for a function u on the Heisenberg group cross R plus, that is the solvable extension satisfying this equation with initial condition here. And as in the case of um, Laplacian, uh, there is a nice convolution kernel, this can be proved, which gives solution, which allows us to write down the solution of the extension problem explicitly as follows. So this phi s rho is given by this equation. Modulo this constants, it is like rho squared plus mod x squared plus mod u squared whole squared plus 16 psi squared. You see that rho equal to zero, the homogeneous norm on the Heisenberg group is coming in the picture. So this to the power minus n plus one plus s by two, which I can write as q plus two s by four, q is the homogeneous dimension, again, the natural dimension. So if I define my kernel like this, and then if I take convolution of f, this is the convolution of the Heisenberg group, non-commutative convolution, and then multiply by rho power two s, then u solves this equation. And then initial condition is satisfied as rho goes to zero, this will converge to f in L2, or more generally Lp. And if I take the derivative of this solution with respect to rho and multiply by rho power one minus two s, then I get the so-called the conformally invariant fractional powers of the sub Laplacian. That's how we got into this situation. So the solution can be written in this particular form. And then again, if by looking at this kernel, we see that this can be holomorphically extended to a complex domain, Cn cross Cn cross C, some domain inside this. So this is the complexification of the Heisenberg group. So inside this domain, there is a, I mean, inside this space, there is a domain to which this can be holomorphically extended. And that is given by, um, which I call it uh, omega r. Let's say, let omega r stands for all z w zeta in C to n plus one, such that I look at the imaginary part of z w zeta minus one fourth of, this is, this, this is the syntactic form, extended to Cn cross Cn. And I want the, 
the homogeneous norm of this homogeneous norm i think i didn't define it on the heisenberg group but just, just indicated the homogeneous norm that should be less than r so this is a domain we can check that this is invariant under the action of the heisenberg group and then if f is in the l2 then the solution defined above that extends holomorphically to this omega rho by 4 so this this one can prove so with this um, yeah here is the the invariance, invariant property of this omega r which we have to make use of. So not only this is invariant under the action of the Eisenberg group, it's also invariant under the action of this un. So un I can now identify with this sp 2 nr intersection, the orthogonal group of order 2n, and then that preserves the symplectic form. And because of that, this can, that's a natural extension to cn cross cn cross c, and then this, this is going to be invariant under the so-called the Eisenberg motion group, which is the semi-direct product of Eisenberg group and unitary group. So we have a natural GN invariant domain. And then on um, now I want to define um, yes, sort of a Sobolo, I mean not the Sobolo space, um, weighted Bergman space. Consider all entire functions on omega rho for which this norm is finite. So this is the Lebesgue measure. I will call it H tilde of omega rho. It's the completion of uh, the space with respect to the above norm. And then we can check that this is sitting inside L2 of omega rho intersection. This is going to be consisting of holomorphic functions only, but they are also in L2 with respect to the Lebesgue measure on omega rho. Um, so we also need a kind of a Sobolo space on the Heisenberg side, like in the case of the real hyperbolic space. So in order to do that, again, there are more, more notations, but then uh, I mean, I have to, I mean, I will just briefly recall. So the PK lambda is a W stand for Lagrange function subtype n minus one. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not able to define all these things because I will run out of time. So this is the complexified, well, maybe I put it here. So this is, e power 2 lambda rho, phi k lambda 2i rho, 2i v. So this is the complexified elementary spherical function on the Heisenberg group evaluated in the imaginary direction. But I have integrating this over a ball of radius rho. The ball is defined in terms of the Heisenberg homogeneous norm. And so that I call it psi k lambda rho. And then I just consider functions in L2 for which uh, the sum is finite. So if I take uh, y equal to zero, v equal to zero, then this is going to be just one. This will not be there and that gives me the L2 space. And this is sort of a Sobolo space because I am putting a weight here. So if this weight is not there, it is that L2 space. Now this, we can study the properties of this weight. Behavior of this is a function of k and rho. So this is sort of a Sobolo space. So I take that Sobolo space <coughs> and then if I start with a function uh, capital F coming from L2 of omega rho, and then ask under what conditions this function can be holomorphically extended to omega rho. And that happens if and only if it's restriction to, I will call the restriction capital little f. So if and only if this is restriction of capital F to uh, the Heisenberg group belongs to this Sobolo space. And moreover, we have this uh, equality of norms. So the norm of the function capital F in, in this space is the same thing as this weighted L2 norm of the original form, the restriction F to the Heisenberg group. We'll make use of this. So, so that is, yeah, in, in order to prove this theorem, I, uh, I have, we have to make use of uh, this something called the Gutzmann's formula for the Heisenberg group. So in the case of the Rn, so this is nothing but the Planchard theorem extended for for holomorphic functions which are square integral with respect to certain nice weight functions. In the case of the Heisenberg group, um, I take a holomorphic functions on C2n plus 1, which is the complexification. So on which the Heisenberg motion group is acting and take the Haar measure, calculate the L2 norm of this with respect to uh, the G variable. And then that can be expressed in terms of the this expression. So these are the elementary spherical functions in the imaginary directions, and these are the spectral projections associated to the Eisenberg group or the sub sublaplacian, and then we have the symplectic form coming. So once we have this Kuzma's formula, then one can prove the previous theorem.
Um, so once we have that, so what, what can we say about the holomorphic extendability of solutions of the extension problem? So, <coughs> so the Gutzmas formula and then the, the theorem I have stated here um, about this, um, which functions can be extended holomorphically from omega rho, from L2 to holomorphic functions. And that connection can be used to prove the following result. So let's see. Here, it, let's assume that S is less than or equal to half, and little f is coming from L2 or n, L2 of the Heisenberg group, and then this is the solution of the extension problem for the sub Laplacian. Um, then we can show that for any gamma less than or equal to minus one plus square root of two, the solution of the extension problem, this one, this extends holomorphically to this domain omega gamma rho is a holomorphic function. And that belongs to this um, Bergman space, h tilde omega gamma rho, and satisfies the uniform estimate. So this is the um, non-Euclidean analog of the previous theorem which we have stated. So once we have this theorem, uh, we can we want to strengthen this theorem, and then we want to arrive at a characterization of eigenfunctions um, for the Laplace Beltrami operator, or equivalently characterization of uh, solutions of the extension problem. In order to do that, um, so this is we need to introduce um, this Sobolev space. I mean, now it's well, I have <coughs> I have defined something called W K lambda rho gamma rho. So I have to recall. Yeah, mm. so these are the elementary, these are coming from the elementary spherical functions on the Heisenberg group. And these functions are coming by, well, here the solution is given by convolution with this kernel. So this kernel is radial in the z variable. So that can be holomorphic, that, that can be extended in terms of the Lagarde functions, because Lagarde functions form an autonomic basis for radial functions on Cn. And then if I do that, then I end up with certain coefficients. Those coefficients are denoted by CK rho lambda. So these are the coefficients coming from the expansion of the kernel. <coughs> this can be explicitly called more or less. They can be expressed in terms of uh, Kuma's hypergeometric functions. And the behavior of this can be studied. So in the, the course of the proof, we have to study how these functions behave as K and K tends to infinity and lambda tends to infinity for a fixed S. So, um, so I, I, I have introduced this uh, space, I mean, this, this weight function, and then my new Sobolo space is defined using this weight function. Let's have this weight function. So once we have that. Um, so we have five minutes left, just as a note. Yeah, just uh, two more slides. So we have oh. this, yeah, we have this Sobolo space. And then correspondingly, we need an analog of the Hardy space on the holomorphic side. So H tilde R2 omega gamma rho is all holomorphic functions on this domain for which this Hardy, Hardy norm, Hardy space norm, just take the L2 norm of F tilde A plus IB over, but this B is coming from uh, H and H, the Heisenberg group, and this is homogeneous norm. There is a measure on the Heisenberg group ball I mean, Heisenberg sphere, integrate over that, and then take the, and then integrate over the Heisenberg group, take the supremum over all R strictly less than gamma rho. So this is a Hardy space. So with this Hardy space, we can prove this result. So when F belongs to this Sobolo space, then the solution of the extension problem holomorphically extends and belongs to this um, Hardy space. And then we have this, um, satisfies this estimate. Uh, this equality of norm holds, and then the map is actually a, a unit a subjective. We can modify the constant so that it is unitary. So this is the analog. And then once we have this, then we have the following uh, characterization for eigenfunctions and then extension problem. So let me just read this. A solution of the extension problem can be written in this particular form. In, form. Solution can be written in this particular form with F coming from L2. You find only if uh, U extends to this as a holomorphic function, belongs to this, and satisfies this estimate. It's sort of a converse with which eigenfunctions can be expressed as a convolution with this one. And then the, at the eigenfunction level, a Laplace, so eigenfunction of the Laplace Beltrami operator with this eigenvalue can be expressed as the Poisson integral. 
um, I want some conditions on this um, initial condition with f coming from this, if and only if it belongs to this or this space and satisfies this uniform estimate. So it's sort of a converse, sort of if and only, sort of characterizing the eigenfunctions of the Laplace polytomy operator in terms of the holomorphically, in terms of certain properties of the holomorphic, holomorphic extension of that to this domain. Oh, so thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for the very informative talk. And we have something like three, four minutes for questions. Is there anybody who wants to ask a question, please? Yes. Please go on. Hi, it's Tony Dooley here. Yeah. Um, I guess that you haven't thought about the quaternionic or octonionic rank oh. one spaces yet. Yeah, I mean, actually we have this result for all H-type groups, but I didn't, I didn't present it. So for any oh, H-type okay. group, we can do this. So the oh, final results cool. are for H-type groups. Well, but, so it doesn't have to be an H-type group coming from an Iwasawa decomposition? Yeah, any, any H-type group, not necessarily an Iwasawa group. One can oh, okay, that's very interesting. Thank you for the talk. Uh, any other question? Yes, can I ask you a question? Um, I wonder if there is any um, connections here with the problem of resonances in quantum ergodicity, where you do the extensions not for the eigenfunctions directly, but for the uh, resolvent, and then you identify the poles of the resolvent as the resonances. Yeah, but there is some connection with the extension problem because solution of the ex extension problem can be obtained using via the, the, the scattering theory. So scattering theory people consider so the, 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 what do you call it, the resolvent operator, and then there is the connection. So the, because we are, we, are, we are arriving at this extension operator via um, fractional powers of the sub Laplacian. So one way to define the fractional powers is via scattering theory. And so that, that is has connections with the resonance. But, um, um, and also but, another question very quickly, uh, yeah, sorry. In the second part of your talk starting from theorem three, I think, onwards. Um, is this some kind of little bit paley uh, sort of decomposition hidden there in your integrals? Um, no, that's an eigenfunction expansion. Eigenfunction expansion is there. The, on the Heisenberg group, one can expand the L2, for an L2 function, we have an expansion. You take the Fourier transform in the central variable, and then that can be expanded in terms of um, Lagarde functions, because the Lagarde functions form an orthonormal basis for radial functions, but then you take the convolution, the twister convolution with the with Lagarde function that takes care of all functions. So that is the expansion. And the Goodsmas formula is sort of a complexified version of that uh, eigenfunction expansion. So, so this means you can also use to, uh, this kind of uh, expansion to define like Bessel spaces or trivial Zorkin spaces and... Yeah, 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 one can do that. Thank you. Thanks. I have just a short question myself. Uh, whether you have, uh, is it correct that, uh, that you had only positive rows of Sobolev spaces inside the L2 space, or do you have the full duality theory and negative values of rho? No, I think the, for, for this problem, we have considered only S positive, and also for some reasons, we have to restrict S less than N plus one by two. But these Sobolev spaces can be defined for other values of S, but I, mean, I don't know. What oh, okay. Yeah, one can define. Okay, I think we should uh, finish uh, the discussion. Thank you very much for the presentation and uh, get Professor Sikura ready for his. So Thank please. Okay, so let me, okay, I'm unmute. Okay, Thank you very much for the invitation. Let me just share my screen. We'll try to use slightly different technology. I hope it will work. So I hope. Oh, great, 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 great. Yeah. Screen.